Welcome back, everybody. My name is Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking. This is the last video before I actually release the Swift UI Advanced Architecture course. It is a paid course. It is the only paid course on this channel, but it is also by far the best course. If you've enjoyed any of the videos on my channel, I can promise you that this one is in a whole new league. When this course goes live, I will, of course, have a launch sale. So the biggest discount will be at launch. But I do want to just note to those of you who are just joining, just following along, that this is an advanced course. This is a very difficult course. If you've never written Swift UI code or you're just learning to code, this course will be way too difficult for you. So feel free to buy it if you want the discount, but I wouldn't start it until you're actually ready for this level of course. Swiftful Thinking has 13 courses. The first 12 are free on YouTube. So watch the first 12 for free, get good, and then you can take this course when you're ready. Those of you who are here and ready to take this course, you're probably wondering what exactly it is that we're going to build. In the last video, I talked about the different parts of the course. The course has three overarching parts. Within those three parts is eight different modules. Within those modules is 24 sub-modules, which comprise of 150 lessons. This is the largest, most complex, most complete course that I've ever created. In this video, I'm gonna quickly show you guys exactly what the app looks like. Now, I wanna be very clear here. The app is cool and it looks great, but it is not the UI that we should be focused on. It's what's behind the scenes, the code base, how scalable is our app, how testable is our app, how clean are we writing the code? And the code base is probably much better than what the app actually looks like. Now the app looks cool, we're gonna run through that in one second, but I want you guys to keep in mind that the real kicker here is what the code base looks like. And that is something that we're gonna to build together. So that's all for me. Let's go check out what we're gonna build. All right, so this is the app that we are actually going to build. And again, this is more about the code base than the actual app. But I wanna walk you guys through some of the features that we're actually gonna to build together. So when we build our app, we are gonna have three schemes. On the left, we have a mock scheme. In the middle, I have my development scheme. And in the right, I have my production scheme. This image at the top is just a random image, but each of these schemes are gonna have slightly different dependencies because we're gonna build our app to be dependency agnostic. So I can use mock dependencies here and production dependencies here. So the app's gonna have a lot of your typical features such as signing in from the launch screen, and an onboarding flow. So if we click get started here, we can go through the onboarding flow. As we go through this, you'll see that the development build here has some A-B tests turned on. So for example, this screen is in the development build and it's not in the mock build here. And if I continue, then we go back into this shared screen state. If I continue in the development build, there's another A-B test that we're gonna to build together. So this time I can select maybe dog here, which avatar do you want to chat with first? And we'll click continue and setup is complete. I'll do it one more for the production build here. And you'll notice that when I click the orange color, we're passing in that color to make sure that we are actually saving the color that the user is selecting. We're gonna then click finish and we'll jump right into our tab bar view. Now, these images that you see are AI generated, so they are not the best images. We'll talk about that in the course, but it is pretty cool that we can make our own avatars. You'll notice here in the middle that the create account screen popped up. Again, another A-B test that we are gonna to configure to try to figure out what is the best approach to actually having users create accounts in our app. You'll notice on the left that these images are all the same and this is all fake data. We literally can build and run our entire application without triggering any of our actual dependencies. So on the right to the development build and the prod build, we're actually using Firebase and other dependencies. So in here, I can swipe through and click a bunch of these. Another A-B test here with this button. So this is the home screen where we have a bunch of avatars like Chris and Alien that is walking in the city that we can chat with. There's a few more popular avatars down here. On the second tab, we have our chat screen. So again, we have this mock version here. These recent chats are being saved in Swift Data. These actual chats are being saved in Firebase. And we can see here in the development build, I have previous chats with both Steve and a dog named Nick. On the right here, we also are handling our empty states. So when users don't have chats. The third tab is of course our profile tab, which you'll notice the color that the user selected in onboarding is still here. 
So a user can then go and create an avatar from this tab. So for example, I'll click the plus here. You'll notice that dog is appearing right here. That's because the user clicked dog in the onboarding flow of this AB test. And now we can go and create an avatar. Maybe I'll create an avatar named Emily. Emily will be a cat, a cat that is sitting in the park. And then we can use AI to actually generate an image. And this AI method is actually a cloud function on the server. So we're hitting a server, the function that we wrote, and we're actually pinging and generating an AI image. It's a decent image. Let's go ahead and click save. And we should now see this in our actual application. So now we can go in and actually start chatting with the avatars that we built. So we can chat with our avatars or avatars that other people built. We come in here, we have an actual chat screen. I can do the same thing with my mock build on the left here. You'll notice the mock data coming through. And now we can actually talk to Emily. Hey, what's up? And we'll see, again, we're gonna actually ping the AI and in real time response coming from Emily, the cat. And you'll notice that she has a little bit of a personality. She's enjoying the sunshine. That's because Emily, again, is a cat that is sitting in the park. We're going to create another A-B test for the avatar profile screen like this. We're also going to show it via a modal like this. So we can go back and forth and try to figure out what is the best configuration for our application. We'll add a bunch of the normal chat features, such as you can see on the left, the time display for all of the chats that you would expect in a normal chat application. Let's go ahead and continue talking to Emily. What are you doing right now? And let's see what she's doing. She is just sitting in the park, soaking up the sun. I love it. She's got the exact personality that we gave her when we created it. Of course, we have the ability to report this user and this chat or even delete the chat. Let's go ahead and report. We're going to configure reusable alerts, reusable modals, and all that good stuff as well. Lastly, if we go back to our home screen, you will notice a couple additional features that we have added. There's this dev settings button, which is only in our mock and our development environments. Our prod build, of course, does not have any sort of dev configuration. So if we go in here and we click dev, we can actually turn on and off lots of our AB tests. So right now you'll notice the create avatar button here. That is one of our tests. So we can actually go ahead and turn off the explore create avatar test. And now we'll get into this behavior here. You'll also notice the categories row is missing from this screen because yet another test that we're going to add is whether we want to hide, show it in the original location like this, or put it at the top of the screen. You'll see now it's all the way at the top. And maybe putting it at the top will actually improve user behavior. So for example, I can click into here and I can see all of the aliens that I can then go and chat with. Jimbo is one of my favorite aliens. Let's go ahead and say, hey, and see if Jimbo responds. Of course, there he is. He is an alien that is smiling in the forest. Again, not the best image coming from the AI here, but again, we're not here to critique the AI. We are here to write great code. There's lots of other hidden features that I haven't covered here, such as enabling push notifications, writing this really cool reusable modal implementation, and lots of other stuff as well. Overall, I think the app came out really well, but again, this is not about the actual app. This is about the code base. And I can promise you that the code base is so much more impressive than what you're seeing here. So that's all from me. This is a very fun app to build. We have lots of features that roll over to a lot of other applications, real-time chatting. We have onboarding flow, tab bar flow. We have your typical settings screen and a whole bunch of other good stuff. I hope you guys do enjoy this course if you decide to embark on this journey. That's all from me and I'll see you in the next video.